Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking about the INFP superpower. What superpower, you might ask? INFPs, those things are weak. INFJs, on the other hand, they're, they're smart, they're bright, they're amazing, they're Jesus incarnate. But INFPs, no, no. Those meek, modest little hobbits, what's so special about them? Well, how could they have any powers? How could they have any purpose in this world? Well, let me tell you how wrong you are there. What if I told you that INFPs are perhaps even better than INFJs? What I've found is uh, that INFPs have a special strength, you know, like you, you kind of go into, and uh, like the MBTI community, they have a tendency to go into all the cognitive functions, you know, like kind of, uh, look at their own dominant function and they will then kind of uh, fetishize, you know, that cognitive function, like how the internet today kind of uh, builds up introverted intuition to be this like big all encompassing thing, you know, like basically any form of intellectual thought or discovery today is introverted intuition. Well, basically anything like emotional or primitive is kind of associated with introverted feeling. But on the other hand, you know, the truth is introverted feeling connects to an important network in the brain and it's a cognitive power. It's not an emotional power. It's a cognitive power and it's something that requires an immense amount of brain power and energy. You know, like just like introverted intuition takes a lot of energy and power to use, so does introverted feeling. Introverted feeling connects to a network called the default mode network or what I would like to call the storytelling network. Because imagine that we can engage with the world in two different ways. One is through the default mode network, the other is through the task positive network. The task positive network is more used by thinking types, the default mode network is more used by feeling types. The storytelling network, as I like to call it, is about and engaging with the world and processing the world as if it was a story, an episode, like it was an part of Netflix, like it was a book, like it had characters, like it had different characters, different parts, different rules. The storytelling network allows us to engage with the world through acting and through social dramatization, creating storylines, creating plots, creating drama, you know, take a look at, you know, YouTuber Matt Sherman, Geek Psychology, you know. One thing that geek psychology does that I think is so fascinating is this ability to translate the cognitive functions to basically superpowers, basically superheroes. He really gamifies the entire uh, world of MBTI and typology. And I find that fascinating. And, you know, therefore, I also think that uh, we have to look at and understand why this is happening. You know, why are we gamifying this? Like, why are we adding stories to this? What's the point of stories, you know? Uh, aren't stories, you know, like old fashioned, you know, like, wasn't that for like people 2000 years ago to spend their time on? Why, why do people tell stories? Why do we have myths? Why do we have legends? Why do we have archetypes? You know, why, why do people even care about these things? You know, why don't we just concern ourselves with rational things, you know, like uh, logic and facts and numbers and things that we can measure? Well, that's because uh, we can't measure human experience. We can't measure um, the depth of an emotion. We cannot explain logically the greenness of grass or um, the different myriad of smiles that exist or that people can engage in and their potential meanings. We can't use uh, logic to explain, you know, the full scope of the universe or uh, what to do with the political situation in Ukraine, you know, we need, we need the storytelling network to kind of help us navigate, you know, complicated social events and uh, humanitarian events and human events, you know, like anything where humans basically touch things, uh, phenomenologically, how do we perceive things, how do we experience things, how do we feel about things, all of those things we need to deal with and understand through the storytelling network. Now, this is a difficult network to use, you know, like you'd think that, oh, anyone can understand emotions, anyone can understand a story, anyone can uh, find meaning in like a song or in a piece of artwork, you know, but that's not really true, is it? 
can everyone really find themselves in a story? Can everyone really find themselves in a piece of artwork? You know, how many people actually go to museums these days? How many people actually watch or look at art? How many people actually engage in and read books on a daily basis or a weekly basis these days? You know, how many people actually engage in and use stories to understand life and what's happening around them? And how many people feel lost on the other hand? How many people feel uncertain about what's happening in the world, uncertain of who they are, uncertain of what they want to do in life, what's meaningful, what drives them, you know, what they are meant to do with their lives, you know, how to have positive and healthy relationships. How many of us don't feel lost and uncertain about how to navigate these matters? Well, let, you t let me tell you something. People that engage more in stories and find a way to use stories in a healthy way and people that get a bigger and more deep understanding of human experience and this width and scope of human experience, people that get better at reading emotions, understanding people, facial expressions, people that get better at understanding the nuances of human communication, these people are able to connect more easily with the world and with themselves. When you read a lot of books, when you read a lot of books, something happens to your brain. It's like you flip a switch. You go from a first person perspective to something bigger, something deeper. You find yourself being able to reflect on your own emotions and your own experiences and your own thoughts as if you were looking at them from another person's perspective. Books give us access to other people's thoughts, unfiltered thoughts and thinking processes. And so deep and raw and honest literature has the tendency to reveal to us ways of thinking that we didn't know were possible. An INFP can go into books or stories and can find themselves in characters and can construct identities and can learn and manage and understand deep logical and profound social facts through these processes. The act of reading a book, be it fantasy, fiction, science fiction or non-fiction, can be deeply transformative to the INFP personality type and the INFPs are some of the most well-read personality types in the world. That's because for them a lot of the time reading is a flow activity and it's one of the many ways an INFP can enter into a state of flow. Any of them require the act of going inside and reflecting on stories and the things that you read. And that means an INFP that's healthy and that's dominant and that's strong in themselves will take a lot of notes that have a strong inner monologue. Everything they read and see will provoke a strong internal reaction in them. Anyone or anything they hear will be understood from whether it's true or false, whether they agree with or disagree with what's happening, whether they feel a connection to what's being said or not. And so what INFPs are doing here is something really fascinating. They're adding multiple layers to life and to human experience, and they're decoding truth and social experience and politics and what's happening in the world. And so they are able to gain a tremendous amount of wisdom and understanding of these experiences. While they might not stand as strong on the terms of factual knowledge or the ability to regurgitate facts or to remember dates or to uh, understand uh, uh, how mathematics or national economics works, they'll have a pretty good understanding of gut feeling. They'll have a pretty strong awareness of the inner voice and how that works and where it comes from, what drives it, and what intentions encompass it. And they'll be able to understand that, to understand how markets work, how people act in markets in times of a crisis or in times of economic decline. An INFP will have a strong understanding of human experience and how humans make decisions and respond to different situations. They also have a strong understanding of cognitive fallacies and biases, things that cloud people's thinkings. INFPs know full well when people are getting misled or when people are getting manipulated and have a strong understanding of when and why people lose track of what they want and how to want it. The storytelling network is and allows you to engage with basically any aspect of life. And so if you hone it well enough and if you use stories to your advantage, you can attain an even greater sense of flow and a greater sense of control. 
That means you can actually use stories to navigate complicated science. You can understand and deal with life using stories. And the more you can gamify and storyify your life, the more effective you will be in managing your work and in managing your career and in managing relationships. People are quick to make judgments, which type is better, which type is smarter, which type is more intelligent. But the truth is, which type is really smarter? Well, that's the type that spent the most time developing and building cognitive flexibility, training and challenging their mind to think about things from more nuances, learning to understand things from different perspectives, learning to entertain riddles and to uh, understand all matters of society. The more you can challenge yourself, the greater the scope of your brain and the mind. And so the most intelligent personality type is the type that has had the genetic luck and the personal drive and ambition to really challenge themselves and their mind. So what is your INFP superpower? Leave your thoughts down below in the comment. Let me know how you use stories and storytelling to your advantage to achieve your goals. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.